Hey everyone, so as my subscribers know, there are two things in life that I am obsessed with. The first thing is making sure that I do not forget to thank everybody that takes a moment out of their very busy day to give my videos a like and to subscribe because seriously, every time you do that, it genuinely supports me. So thank you so much for everyone that takes a moment to do so. But the second thing, of course, that I am absolutely obsessed with is earning money for doing absolutely nothing. Yes, it is true, as my subscribers know, I am absolutely obsessed with passive income sources and creating them, and I myself have several, and you can learn more about them by watching this video, how I earn $1,000 a day passively. So I thought, why not do a fun little experiment today and see if I can create a new passive income source, but this time with Amazon. Yep, because you see, here is the deal. If you head on over to Fiverr, you'll find that there are plenty of gigs out there promising you that they will make you money with Amazon. So I decided to do this experiment and put them to the test. Could I really hire people on Fiverr to earn me passive income with Amazon? But of course, before I reveal the results of that experiment, I should probably explain just how we are gonna be earning money with Amazon. Because you see, here's the thing, right? Most people think that the only way to make money with Amazon is to become a seller on here and sell products through the Amazon FBA program. But actually, Amazon has tons of ways to make money through their website and services too. So for example, one way that you can make money on Amazon is by writing an ebook and listing it on the Amazon Kindle Marketplace. And every time someone reads your ebook, you passively earn Kindle commissions. And another way that you can make money with Amazon actually is through becoming what's called an Amazon Mechanical Turk worker. You register and then you can complete small, easy tasks, such as verifying company address information, rating search engine results, and resizing pictures in exchange for cash. A lot of people use this to make money on the side. But today, we are gonna be looking at a different way to make money through Amazon, and that is with the print-on-demand service, Merch by Amazon. Using their Merch by Amazon service, anyone can sell made-to-order merchandise such as t-shirts, hoodies, and even pop sockets, and make money doing so for free. The way that it works is super simple. You simply register for an account, and once Amazon has approved and accepted it, you can then upload either a picture or slogan, and choose which products you'd like to sell it on, with standard t-shirts easily being the biggest sellers you pick which color t-shirts you like and think it looks good on, and you set a product price. Amazon will then store a digital copy of your product in its database. And after that, you create a product page for your new merch. You give your item a name, a description with bullet points, and then you save it. And Amazon will create a product page for you with your new t-shirt inside of its website once they've looked over your t-shirt design and approved it, which usually takes one to two days. And so now, when customers are browsing through Amazon and uh, looking for a t-shirt for their friend that is a plane and aviation geek, <laughs> they can find your new t-shirt when they're browsing through Amazon and just searching for, you know, aviation geek t-shirt for their friend because your product page has related keywords in it. So you don't have to market your t-shirt because Amazon markets it for you which means that you get to take advantage of the billions of customers that are coming to Amazon every month looking for products to buy. And the cool thing is that when someone does come and say, buy this t-shirt from you, you don't have to do anything. Nope, because Amazon takes care of everything for you. Amazon will see the order and go, yep, let's make it. One of their merchandise printing factories will then print the design you uploaded onto a t-shirt and then package the t-shirt up and ship it out to the customer all automatically, all done on autopilot. In the industry, we call the service print on demand because that's literally what it is. Amazon prints t-shirts on demand as customers order them. And after they do, they'll pay you a portion of the profit of the sale as a commission, which they pay straight to your bank account. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you'd like to learn even more about setting up a print on demand business, you should be sure to download my free ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Online Stores Follow to Make Over $10,000 a Month. And you'll find a link to download my free ebook in the video description below. But anyway, back to the video. And as you can see, if you set up a print on demand business like this, once you've got popular items selling, it can make you money passively hands off. And a great example of somebody doing this right now is this t-shirt here. This has been sold through Amazon's merch platform and customers love it. I've installed a Chrome extension called Jungle Scout, which tracks and estimates sales for products on Amazon. And using this, we can see that it's getting between 10 to 20 sales a day on average, with Jungle Scout estimating that it's made 539 sales in the past 30 days, which is $9,675. Well, as this t-shirt here has a royalty profit margin of 20%, that means the creator of this t-shirt has made roughly $1,935 passively this month just from effectively uploading this picture to Amazon so that they can print it onto t-shirts, which is pretty neat. 
And so of course I can imagine a bunch of you are thinking, well, gee Sarah, why is it that this t-shirt sold so well? Well my friend, it is for three major reasons. The first reason is because of the t-shirt niche. So you can see that this t-shirt here targets two niches, the birthday niche and the video game niche. Video game birthday parties are popular and a lot of mothers like to dress up in the theme of their children's parties. Most likely when this t-shirt was first launched, it was either the first or one of the first to target the specific yet popular cross niche. And so it filled a gap in the marketplace by creating a fun looking design, which of course leads on to the second major reason why it sold so well because it's a genuinely cool, fun looking t-shirt design that fits its purpose very well. And the third reason is because thanks to the optimized choice of title, bullet points and description, the other t-shirt creator shows that it contains related keywords to the t-shirt niche and theme. And so this t-shirt now shows up near the top of search results for related search phrases. And so people can easily find it and buy it. So as you can see, if you get these three things right, it's a winning combination. But of course, I can imagine a lot of you are watching at home thinking, well, gee, Sarah, that's great and all, but how can I get these three key things right with minimal effort? And ah, uh, my lazy friends, ah, uh, that is exactly why we are checking out Fiverr today. Because on Fiverr, there are gigs like this that promise to do all three things of these for you. They promise to do research and identify good niches to design t-shirts in, and they promise to then come up with the design ideas themselves and create them. And for some, they even promise to write your product page title, description, and bullet points to maximize sales, traffic, and conversions. <laughs> Basically, it's a business in a box. They give you everything and you just plug it into Amazon and then you make money. Or at least that's how it's supposed to work. So let's find out if it does actually work for this experiment. I have ordered a hundred different designs and I've uploaded them to Amazon following the instructions as closely as I can that the Fiverr sellers gave me. And we're gonna see if it actually makes us money. So I'll also be showing you how Merch by Amazon works and how you can use it if you'd like to start your own Amazon Merch business too. But yes, to start off the experiment, I came to Fiverr and I did a search for highly rated Fiverr gigs with at least a 4.9 out of five star rating that create t-shirts for the Merch by Amazon program. And I made sure to only select gigs where they did the product research for you to find those important gaps in the market that, as I said, are key to making money on Amazon. And also where possible, I made sure to purchase any additional add-ons to my gigs where the Fiverr seller would create the product title, description, and bullet points for me. The first gig I ordered had over 150 reviews and an average five-star rating. It cost $50 and I got these 10 t-shirts here with no optimized listing included. The next gig I ordered had over 100 reviews and an average five-star rating. It cost 60 US dollars and I got these five t-shirts here with no optimized listing included. The third gig I ordered had over 100 reviews and an average 4.9 star rating. It cost me $80 and I got these 10 t-shirts here, along with an optimized product listing to use for each of the different t-shirts that included a product title, page bullet points, and description. After that, I ordered this gig here that had nearly 300 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. It cost me $50 and it came with these 20 t-shirts and no optimized listings. I then ordered this gig, which this time had over 400 reviews and a 4.9 star rating. For $100, I got these 20 different t-shirt designs and no optimized listing. And then after that, I then ordered from a gig that this time had over a thousand reviews. Wow, with an average five out of five star rating as well. I paid $60 and I got these 10 t-shirts. Included in the order was also a spreadsheet that had optimized listings for each t-shirt. And I also ordered these 10 t-shirts for $45 from a gig with over 300 views and a 4.9 star rating. He didn't include mock-up photos and so these were the basic design files. And something that was actually especially helpful with this gig was that he gave me a generic optimized Amazon listing that you could just plug different keywords into. So I actually ended up using a slightly modified version of this when I was uploading t-shirts that didn't come with an optimized description or bullet points. But in addition to this, I decided to shake things up a little bit. Because while by far the most popular items with customers is the standard t-shirts, they do have other products you can make too. So I thought, why not make this experiment a bit more interesting by selling something else? And I spent $25 to order 25 different pop socket designs from a gig with over 100 reviews and an average five star rating. In total, I spent $460 on all of my Fiverr products, which when you add in Fiverr processing fees came to just over 500 US dollars. <laughs> Now you see, here's the thing you have to understand about the Merch by Amazon program. When you first register and create an account with them, you can't just come in and upload 100 different t-shirts or products. 
Nope, Amazon places two limits on your account. First, they limit how many products you can upload each day. They started me off with just two products a day. In addition to that, they also limit how many products you can sell in total. Everyone right now starts off with a limit of 10. In time, as you sell more and more products, your limits will increase. So you will go from tier one to tier two, which lets you upload 25 products. And then you'll go from tier two to tier three, which lets you upload 100 products. And then you'll go from tier three to tier four, which lets you upload 500 products. And then you'll go from tier four to tier five, which lets you upload 1,000 products. And then you'll go from tier five to tier six, which lets you upload 2,000 products. And then you'll go from tier six to tier seven, which will let you upload 4,000 products. And then you can go from tier seven to tier eight, which will let you upload a maximum of 8,000 products. But here's the thing, right? To move between the tiers, you have to sell an equal number of products to your tier. So if you wanna move from tier seven to tier eight, you have to sell 4,000 products. Getting to tier eight in time for this video to be filmed and edited seemed a little daunting, but to give this experiment a fair go, I decided I had to do everything I could to hit tier three and upload at least 100 different products to see how many I could sell. And here's how you go through and upload a product. You start off by uploading a picture and you go in and select which product you'd like to sell. Each of these counts as a single product, including each international marketplace. So if you selected to upload a standard t-shirt on both amazon.com USA, and amazon.co.uk for the United Kingdom, there'll be two products, not one. So when most people start out, they only upload their designs onto standard t-shirts in the USA, as these are the most popular item overall and sell the best. After that, you then just go into each one and choose which product colors you would like for it and choose your price. Now, when I uploaded mine, I stuck to a very low price and that's because most merch by Amazon coaches will tell you to start with a very low price to encourage as many sales as possible so that you can move up the tiers faster. I also selected dark t-shirt colors and heather colors. You can choose up to 10 colors. When you do prioritize the heather colors, like dark heather, heather navy, and heather gray, and darker colors such as black. That's because heather colors and dark colors such as black and dark heather sell the best. I know that through my own experience of selling clothing in my print on demand business, and also because of marketing studies done showing which color clothing sells the best. By far, black t-shirts are easily the biggest seller and make up the majority of sales. And that is why by default, Amazon actually selects black as the standard default color. They do this to encourage you to create a design that will look good on a black t-shirt since they know that it sells the best. <laughs> and so once you've gone in and edited and uploaded the design that you want to sell, you create a product listing for it by giving it a title, a brand name, bullet points, and a description. The bullet points and description are optional to add, but it's highly recommended that you do create one. The brand name can be anything. Amazon will just create a page for your brand name, listing all the products you upload and sell under it. Now for this experiment, as I said, wherever I could, I just used the information that the Fiverr gig gave me. So for this shirt here, they provided me with what they believed to be an optimized page title, bullet points, and description. I found it very interesting that they used a string of keywords for the title rather than use a t-shirt slogan or something like that. Some Fiverr sellers used a slogan, others used a string of related keywords instead to maximize the chance of my t-shirt showing up for as many search phrases as possible. I also found that some Fiverr sellers made their titles way too long and I had to shorten them myself because they didn't fit, which is something to keep in mind if you do choose to use one of these services. Uh, but yeah, this seller just had a spreadsheet that contained a title and two bullet points per design, so I just copied and pasted them. But yeah, because I was just plugging in information that the Fiverr seller gave me and I was just copying and pasting it, uploading this t-shirt was super duper quick. So I uploaded my first two designs and I hit my daily upload limit. <laughs> And then I came back each day and just uploaded more and more designs until I had hit my 10 overall product limit. And the result? Well, I made no sales. <laughs> bummer. And actually, it was even more of a bummer because for me to be able to carry on with this experiment, I needed to move from tier one to tier two, which meant that I needed to sell 20 t-shirts. But I didn't have time to wait around for that to happen and so I had to cheat and just go ahead and buy 10 of my own t-shirts and donate them. And you know, it worked. The day after I bought my 10 t-shirts, my account instantly moved from tier one to tier two and I had a highly daily upload. I could now add up to five products a day. And so I decided to shake things up a bit and since the t-shirts didn't work out for me, this time upload the pop socket designs until I hit my 25 product limit. And the result? Well, one of my pop sockets got banned. 
Yep, I got this lovely letter telling me that this pop socket I uploaded was breaking copyright and trademark laws. When I saw this, I suspected it got rejected because the phrase cowgirl, which was being used in the title, tripped the trademark filter. So I resubmitted the pop socket, but this time removed the phrase cowgirl from the title. And the result? Well, it actually got accepted. So yeah, the next day Amazon looked over my submission and they accepted it and it went live. Sadly though, this really didn't help me because still nobody bought anything I had uploaded. And that was a real problem because again, I'd hit my product limit and I had promised that for this experiment, I would upload at least a hundred different designs to give it a fair shot. And so I just cheated again and bought more of my own t-shirts and donated them. And it worked. The next day I woke up and saw that I had moved from tier two to tier three with a shiny new product limit of a hundred products. <laughs> and so each day I came back and uploaded another five products until I hit my 100 product limit. And the result? Well, while I was finishing uploading the rest of my designs, another four items got banned for copyright and trademark infringement. And they were these designs. Some of these I could try and guess the reason why they got banned, for others, I genuinely had no idea why they got banned. But you know what? It never seemed to impact my account. Amazon never penalized me or punished me or banned my account. They just rejected the designs. And this was actually a big reason why I had purchased a bit more than 100 designs because I did expect some to probably get banned. <laughs> But yes, I did eventually get to a hundred products uploaded and accepted by Amazon. And so after that, after all that, what was the result? Did I make any money? Well, I actually did make a sale. Seeing the sale coming through while I was doing this experiment was so fun. It was one of those, ah, look, it does actually work moments, you know? <laughs> People do indeed buy Amazon merch t-shirts. It was this design here that sold, it was for a black 2XL t-shirt. And because I know a lot of people will ask in the comment section about which Fiber Gig made this, it was this gig here. So I'll have a link to it in the video description below if you'd like to go take a look and check it out. The gig didn't include an optimized product page, just the design. And so the title, description, and bullet points that you can see that I included were based off of the generic template that this gig here gave me. So I'll include a link to this as well. So obviously when you compare the amount of money that I spent on Fiverr gigs versus the money that I made from selling a t-shirt, I did not make my money back on this experiment. <laughs> but I still consider it extremely valuable because I learned a lot about why some Amazon t-shirts sell super well and others don't sell as well. The product page was clearly optimized enough to pull in traffic and buyers and the design of the t-shirt was engaging and cool enough that somebody actually handed over their money and bought it. <laughs> but the truth is, is that it was just a copy of a design that's already popular and has already been copied by other designers multiple times. So I think that the way that these Fiverr gigs are able to pump out 20 designs in four days is they just copy a lot of previously popular designs to minimize product research time. However, as t-shirts like the show, the key to true success isn't in copying, it's in innovating by finding gaps in the marketplace and filling them with new shirt designs, either through your own skills or by hiring proven artists that create designs that customers love. So I highly recommend that if you plan to do this, to come up with those unique ideas yourself and use freelancers to help turn your ideas into a reality. If like me, you aren't an artist or graphic designer to create these cool engaging designs that sell just like the shirt did. So did my video teach you something new? If it did, please hit subscribe, click that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you'd like to learn more about how I run my print on demand business, you should be sure to watch my video, five income sources that I built in my 20s that makes me over $1,000 a day. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.